Hey, great friends. What's happening? Hey, dude, it's Monday. I mean, what a weekend, right? I mean, what a weekend if you're a sports fan. And by the way, if you're a sports radio talk show host or sports YouTuber or TV guy, dude, what a weekend of content we have. So we'll all, we'll get to all of it and uh, everybody stay with us. First, I got to thank all of our great sponsors. Seven Mile Casino starts. Hey, Alex, I noticed that um, during the show, when we go to a commercial break, we put up a full screen graphic that says Seven Mile Casino and it's got that logo right there, that logo. But I got these old logos. I got to get the new freshened up Seven Mile Casino logo. I'm going to to get on that this week. Just what I've got time for. You think Browner would help me or no? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. think he will? I think he will. I think Browner will help me. I do. Seven Mile Casino, though. I saw a lot of people in our YouTube chat on Friday going, who wants to meet at Seven Mile on Sunday for games? Did everybody go down there? Miss Molly, I saw you were trying to initiate. If you're looking for a great place to watch Monday Night Football tonight, all the table games you love, blackjack, poker, and more. You've got a smoke-free environment. You're seven minutes south of downtown San Diego, and you got Sammy's Restaurant and Bar with the Chef of the Year. So many reasons to enjoy Seven Mile Casino. The website is sevenmilecasino.com. Hey, if you're down there, you might, if I say down there, if you're down in that way, Bay Boulevard in Chula Vista, and you want to stop by, not too far away are our friends from Tory Holistics and California Holistics. So Tory's up here, up north, north of the 8, north of the 56 in uh, in Sereno Valley. And... Um, the California holistic store is in Chula Vista. The Chula Vista store is great because it's kind of like in a shopping center and it's a standalone and it's, it's got its own part of the parking lot. It's very colorful. You can't, you can't miss it. Tori holistics is in Sorrento Valley. It's um, more in like a business park kind of a place and doesn't stand out quite as much, but I don't find it hard to find. In fact, I told the story a couple weeks ago, some lady came in huffing and puffing when I was in the uh, waiting room at Tori holistics. She's like, I couldn't find this place. And I was like, girlfriend, calm down. And use my promo code AMAZING. You'll save 20%. Last night, I went over to a friend of mine's house. They ordered from Tory Holistics for delivery. I go, did you use the promo code? They go, we we didn't know. How could you not know? Everybody knows. AMAZING. You save 20% when you spend $75 or more at Tory Holistics and California Holistics. And one last thing I want to talk about real quick. Um, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty. Remember the, fr the friend I told you about, Alex? Who um, I told him, dude. Every day you wait to buy this house, it's going to be 30,000 more next month and 30,000 more next month. And, 30, and finally, he decided, you know what? You're right. And he called Gary. And I don't know exactly what's happening, but I know that he's trying to make it happen right now. I know he's he's putting in an offer on this house. He's like, screw it. Let's just go for it. So it's a complicated time in real estate, but there's a guy who can make it simple for you. That's Gary Cooper. 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299. It's Monday. Lots to get to. Let's roll. Hey, great friends. What is going on? It is Monday. It is October 2nd. Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man coming to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. By the way, you're looking for a great place to watch Monday Night Football tonight. Seven Mile Casino, you're playing blackjack, poker, other table games. You got Sammy's Restaurant and Bar with the Chef of the Year. You got a smoke-free environment, and it's all just seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. at Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, boys, I'm jumping right in. You ready? This was an incredible weekend of sports. And, and an incredible weekend of some FOMO, too, if I'm being honest. Here's what I mean. Um, the games all weekend long, incredible. You know, the Colorado-USC game early Saturday morning, a game that I left when it was 21-0 USC, and Colorado came storming back, and it makes me think that USC is not really very good, at least on the defensive side. We'll talk about that. Uh, San Diego State getting blasted Saturday night by Air Force. Oh, man, the, the pressure is cooking with my man Brady Hoke. Saturday night, watching this Canelo fight, I don't know why I do this to myself. I mean, I really don't. Like, it, it wasn't terribly exciting, frankly. Um, I mean, listen, well, I'll talk about how I watched the fight because I, I didn't pay for it. So I, I'm not going to complain from that perspective, but I, I watched these fights and I, it just never really delivers for me. By the way, speaking of Vegas, did anybody see the videos this weekend from the opening of the sphere with you two? I had friends that were there on opening night and they shot videos that they were like, dude, this will never tell the story of how incredible it was. And the videos that they sent me were the sickest things I've ever seen. I can't wait to go see a show in the sphere in Vegas. And then we get to Sunday. What a morning of Sunday morning football. 
The Rams take a monster lead, 23-0 over the Colts. Wait a second. Colts with a rookie quarterback come storming back. Game goes to overtime. And Puka Nakua, who is becoming like the sensation of all rookie offensive players in the NFL, scores his first touchdown in a walk-off. And then later in the day, the Chargers and the Raiders. Chargers take a big lead. Looks like it should be easy. Browner's boy, Khalil Mack, is having the game of his life. And then the Raiders, with a rookie quarterback making his first start, just the dumbest coaching decision you could ever possibly make. And I'm not even talking about Brandon Staley going for it on fourth down, which he didn't get again. I'm talking about Josh McDaniels. You, you've got Josh Jacobs in the back, and, and you don't hand the ball off to him. You're going to have this rookie quarterback who's been sacked six times, fumbled. You're going to have that guy throw in that situation with all that time remaining in the game? Oh, bro. I could talk all day long, and uh, I'm just kind of giving you the highlights from Saturday morning through Sunday evening. And then my boy, Zach Wilson. I'm the only guy in America other than Robert Sala that didn't give up on this guy. He didn't get it done, found a way to screw it up, but showed that, that I'm not giving up. I won't give up on this kid. So opening monologue, man, wasn't even intended to be a monologue. Just oh. football on the mind. It's Monday, grande, brown man. What's good? Didn't even mention the most important story. <laughs> you didn't. I'd be curious to hear what it is. Our current leadership team continues to have my full support. Padres chairman, Peter Seidler. When that statement was released this morning, mm -hmm. my heart sank to my feet. Why? Because your boy's keeping his job. And it made me sick. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I told you that last week. <laughs> no, I know, I know you did, and I don't, and I, and I'm, I'm not. Eighty two and eighty. What's the problem? Hello? You know how you oh, know how please. you're expecting. Hello, you know how you're expecting something, but then when it happens, it still pisses you off. Eighty two and eighty. You're the only M effort in the city that feels that way. <laughs> Honestly, if people feel that way, they should be embarrassed. Listen, right. If people are if doing think, happy dances, right. If you're doing happy dances and you should be embarrassed. You should be ashamed. I don't want to be yourself. friends with you. And you know what? Right. I don't want to do this show anymore. Me neither. I know it's making me ill. Let me tell oh, you. wow. That's it. Goodbye, Alex. That's how I feel. Uh, let me let me tell y'all <laughs> something. Fun. I can right. promise y'all. I can <laughs> promise y'all. There's one more person who feels like me. One more. The guy who owes the team. And that's the only one that really matters. I told y'all this is gonna happen. They 82 and 80, baby. He go get them in the room and go, hey, man, we did good at the end. Figure it out. Figure it yeah, out. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about what you said about that last week. We did good at the end. <laughs> you know, you know, if you were to look at the Padres schedule, and it's funny, Alex, you say that that's the top story. Um, I come in on a Monday afternoon, and I have just, I just regurgitated all over you from, from Saturday morning till Sunday night and every sport I looked at. And you notice that I didn't mention the Padres because the Padres and the White Sox this weekend meant nothing to me. Now, had the Marlins not already won and eliminated the Padres, yeah, maybe I would have kept in touch. But as predicted, they would make this run, they'd win those games, and they, they wouldn't get in. And if you're happy at 82 and 80 with the results, if that's what makes you happy, we didn't make the playoffs, but we were two games better than 500. If that's success, awesome. But I looked at the schedule the last month, and maybe you could even pull it up. Um, I would look at this schedule, Browner, and you tell me. The Dodgers had really nothing to play for. You know, Dodgers had nothing to play for when they played the Dodgers, and they won two out of three in that series. Who did the Padres really, really beat down the stretch? Were they beating playoff contenders? Were they beating teams that were furiously, desperately trying to claw their way to the postseason? I mean, when you really, really look at, at how the last month of the season went. Yeah, they won a lot of games, a lot more than any other month. But when you really look at who they beat and how the pressure was off, if if you or Peter Seidler thinks that this season was a success because you finished 82 and 80, if two games makes you feel different about yourself, good for you guys. See you next year at the same time and at the same spot because you will not be any oh, different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I get, oh, I see you there. I see you there. When we set the attendance record again next year, I'll see you there. When we raise these ticket prices, I'll see you there. Because you'll be there. You'll be there. That's what people don't understand. Y'all coming back. Y'all be mad. Yeah, be mad now. Be mad now. It's okay. 
I see y'all in spring training and everybody's fired up again. I think you're right. I actually think you're right. Sadly, I think you're you're exactly right. I think that that the fan base will be disappointed. They mm -hmm. will have had a good they will have had a good time. Yep. They will look at all the statistics and they'll say, this doesn't seem to make mathematic sense. How could they be this good and this good and this good in these categories? And also and this then, bad. And how could they also have been this bad for this long? But you know what? If they were this good, then next year, if everything gets straightened out, they could get it back together. I I think you're right that that's what fans will will hope, but I don't yeah. think I don't think that's what will happen. Again, look at this is this was my biggest fear at the end of the year. And I think I said this in like mid-August when I said it was over, the day after Alex said it was over. I said, statistically, at the end of the year, it'll look right. For the guys who they paid, it'll look right, with the exception of Manny Machado, because apparently he was hurt. It looks right. Cronenworth got hurt, so he his year's incomplete. Manny kind of got hurt towards the end. He tapped out because physically, why keep going? But he was the only one. Uh, Xander Bogarts gave you what he said he was going to give you. Uh, Soto had a career year home runs, gave you what he said he was going to give you. We kind of seen what Tatis is. He might be the best defensive right fielder in the league. I don't know about Ath that. Let's, let's athletic. not get crazy. Look at, look at the plays. Yeah, look at the plays. Just so, at, you know, <laughs> I mean, dude, th there's this there's this guy named Mookie up in L.A., and his team is like a 100-win team, and he plays right field. I said defensive. I said uh, defensive. I still take Mookie bets defensively. I'm taking Tatis defense. Mookie even play right field? I, I know. Now he now he plays shortstop, second base. He should be a starting pitcher. I just think, like, regardless of whatever happened in September and whatever the stats look like, it doesn't tell the story. Like, if you paid attention, you know what the story is, and you know that the failure of this organization. And if you're – and I'm being serious. Like, I, I know that there's – sarcasm running around right now but if you're really looking at this team as the owner and you're like well you know we played well in september we were 82 and 80 if that's really the mindset of that owner i will double down and i will say it again he's a bad owner yeah yeah i mean listen okay. if you if you don't look he's gonna do what he's gonna do correct and, and here's and here's the thing he's and, and by the way He's yeah. forecasting what he's going to do dude, so dude, you, so no one's gonna be shocked dude he's obsessed with aj preller I'm not saying that because that's like some flippant radio thing to say. I'm telling you that I know people. Oh, yeah. This is right. I know people. Oh, here we that's go. right. I know people. Here yeah. We go. Sound like such a dick when I say that. But here's the thing. I have, some, I have some people that I know quite well that are very, very, very closely connected to Peter himself. And they will tell you. He is obsessed with AJ Preller. He thinks he's something super genius. It's like it's like Peter Seidler looks at AJ Preller like he's this baseball Elon Musk, like he's so much smarter and so much more innovative and and so brilliant and there's and there's nobody better. <laughs> there's nobody better when it comes to building a baseball team than AJ Preller. Uh... And that is Peter Seidler's obsession with the guy. It's weird. That's a great that's a great comparison because now you're at a point where people like they even hear Elon Musk's name and they go, Oh my god. And that's Alex. Here's mm -hmm. he hears Preller's name, he goes, Ugh. No, I think no. AJ Preller has a future in baseball. I just don't think he has a future in being the top dog in an organization. I don't think that I think he's proven here for a long time what he is. I think he's an incredible scout. He can find talent in random places in this world and he can get you some top notch talent. I've said that I'm, I'm not afraid of that. I think this dude is, is, is a, that's what he does. He finds talent. He brings in talent. That doesn't mean that he should be the president of baseball operations for this team. If you want to be a world series contender year in and year out, Prater Seidler said that this is going to be the, oh, a decade of dominance. Well, 2020, I don't count that 2021 collapse 2022 magical run to the NLCS 2023 epic failure. So, Two or three years, failure in a, in a decade of dominance. Bro, you're going Padres... you're, you're to keep fighting us on on 82 and 80 is not a success. You're going to keep fighting us that, that's, that this season was not a failure, aren't you? Listen, I'm telling y'all from a perspective, This, I don't know Peter Seiler. I'm telling y'all from the way he's projected to me, this is what he thinks. This is what he thinks. Mm -hmm. and, and people are out here walking around in their own personal feelings as if that's going to make a difference as to what he does. So when he does what he's going to do, 
and you're mad, and I, oh, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna. You setting yourself up for failure. So I told you. One thing Browner has. Let them, let them entertain y'all. If they're not entertaining y'all, go about your day. So I think we gotta take a take a step back for a second. I'm not trying to make this a bigger thing, but Browner, we always make we always like point out he doesn't have the scars as a San Diego Padre fan. He doesn't. He admitted that last week. I don't have these yeah, deep, don't. deep scars. You know what Browner does have, and he's aptly very very able to talk about. And he this is the point he's coming from: bad ownership. One hundred the Reinsdorfs. These are the teams. Going. These are the teams that this man has followed. Yeah, keep the going. Bears, the White Sox, the Cubs, whoever the Cubs. Like just as the teams that the that Bulls? Browner grew up, the Bulls. Yeah. Like, dude, yeah. that's struggling boy. That's so what I when when, when when Browner Browner is a pro. Browner's got scars of bad ownership. So he's trying to protect us. He's trying to protect the great friends from mm -hmm. a bad owner doing bad things yeah. because he's seen it for forty two years of but his you know life. What? He's seen it. But you know what happens, Browner? Let me tell you what let me tell you what happens with bad owners. Tell me if you agree with this. If you're a bad owner, you usually hire the wrong management types. Friends. Okay. Then the wrong management types that you hired hire the wrong coaches. And then they draft or secure the wrong players. And then before you know it, bad ownership up here trickles all the way down. And then what happens is you just don't, you don't succeed. Success is not being nine and eight in the NFL. Success is not 82 and 80 in baseball. So what I'm getting at is, is that when you have bad ownership, it does trickle all the way down. And here are some examples. You look at, at the bears. How could you have a lead like they had yesterday over the Denver Broncos and be on the verge of getting their first win and they blow that game to the Denver Broncos who gave up 70 last week. And you know why? Because bad owners hire bad management people who hire really bad coaches who then acquire players that all of a sudden are supposed to be their top caliber player. And then they're a healthy scratch. In fact, don't even travel with the team anymore. I mean, how do you, th that is bad ownership. And here's now bring it home. If you're Peter Seidler, and you know that A.J. Preller, it's been widely reported now, he's an, uh, an overbearing, micromanaging pain in everybody's ass. And that drive is not making us better. It's tearing us apart. So bad, bad owner, bad GM, hires wrong manager five times, uh, gets talent, doesn't get what he's supposed to from it, and that's the result. Bad ownership, bro. If you <clears throat> okay, so Alex is ashamed of themselves yesterday. Come on, Alex. Man. Alex is one thousand percent correct about my experience in ownership. What I will tell you, the one thing Peter Seiler has done that no Cub owner has ever done, that the White Sox owner has never done, and that the Chicago Bulls owner has never done. What's up? He has opened the checkbook and he spent the money. He gave these guys the money to say, go do whatever it is you have to do. And so that's why when I started the year, I said, that's my owner. Because all I want the owner to do is give people the means to succeed. What you do with what I give you is your business. This is your rope. Now you go buy some velvet rope, you can go buy silk rope, you can go buy cotton rope, whatever you want to buy. This is your rope. You can do whatever you want with it. Here's the money. Make us look good. But if you don't, that's the end of it. Turning into now the, the problem place. is now. Now the true. I mean, didn't the now, didn't the Cubs win the World Series? So so well, don't you want your owner? Don't you don't you want your owner? Two, Twenty years ago. Yeah, but don't you want your owner to provide a championship, not just spend money? In my lifetime, every Chicago team has won a championship. Cubs mm -hmm. like eight years ago. I mean, yeah, no, did, no. How long I wish ago was it was eight years ago? Well, it was, it was the eight. No, no, they, well, no, no. Come on, man. What no, year is this? Twenty sixteen. Right, because they had they had Anthony Rizzo, they had uh, yeah. they had Chris Bryant, David Ross. Oh, that's right, they did, they did. Yeah. I'm thinking of the White Sox. Sorry. Come on, dog. Yeah, White Come on, Sox. dog. Catch up, will you? I mean, I know it's Monday, dog, and all. Well, listen, it is Monday. It is indeed, and uh, we are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. So, look, here's where we started. I'm I with you, side. I'm with you, big dog. I woof, threw a woof, bunch of football stuff at you. <laughs> I threw a bunch <laughs> of football stuff at you, and boxing, and everything else that went on this weekend. Alex comes back with you're missing the biggest story from earlier today when Seidler puts out a statement saying he's going to get everybody in a room. I mean, essentially, it's what he said. Actually, why don't we put it up on the screen? 
Let's take a quick look at it. See what uh, Seidler said. By the way, I thought it was pretty funny that look at this at the top SD, the logo, then official got to make it big. And then statement. It's a San Diego official statement. Well, I want the statement part to be like nice and cool and like, you know, graphic artsy. I, I just, hating, I don't, bro. That's bomb. no, no, it's I'm just, hating. it's, like it's the way I, I like I that font. What about the palm? What about the blurry palm trees? That didn't do anything for you. I mean, yeah, it's just so funny how this comes out on this piece of stationery, rather than just being black and white. Yeah. Oh, by the way, when I got when I got real quick, I got the email. Somebody Mm -hmm. sent me the link. I'm just kidding. I got the email from the PR, (laughs) the PR director, Mm -hmm. and and it says Craig Huffner statement from Padres chairman Peter Seiler and I was like I I don't think I've ever I was Usain Bolt opening that thing mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever opened an email as fast as I did it and I read it and I was like give it to me give it to me nope brom, no. brom, brom, brom. Yep. here let's take a look let's take a look at the uh, the message here go ahead and read it Alex if you could we entered 2023 with expectations that we would build on last year's NLCS appearance and contend for a World Series championship we fell short of that goal the Padres organization will learn from the season and emerge in 2024 with the pieces in place to compete for San Diego's first World Series title. Our current leadership team continues to have my full support, and I have asked them to perform a thorough assessment of our organ- organization beginning today. We all make the changes. We will all we will make the changes necessary to play championship caliber baseball for our extraordinary fans in 2024. Give me a freaking break god that's so like cheese pr gosh rah rah yeah 82 and 82 and 80 man y'all hey, y'all, tr- missing I, the, y'all missing the I, message i trust my group so much i trust mm-hmm. everybody so much that here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna have them evaluate themselves and then tell me how great they are and how it's everybody else's fault Again, the only way there will be any change is if Bob Melvin decides to retire. Oh, he's gone, quit. You, dude. He's, he's gone. filling a blank. However, dude, Bruce Bochy three or was it Bruce Bochy two point oh and Bob Melvin ends up with the Giants and wins the World Series. Well, that's what everybody years. jumps to that conclusion. They're like, "Hey, look, the yeah. Giants fired their manager Gabe Kapler before the season even ended." I didn't really uh, quite understand why they did that. And then everybody in the Padres world goes, "They're well, a serious watch organization." Happens. Watch what happens. Bob <laughs> Melvin will go take that job in San Francisco and watch what happens to Bob Melvin. Uh, and all people are like, oh, they're not going to let him go to a division rival. Okay. Did they let Dave go to a division rival? Right. They got to let Bud Black go to a division rival. They let Bruce Bochy go to a division. Like, come on. Come yeah. On. They're, they don't care. Come on. Well, yeah, listen, AJ, AJ is so much smarter than everybody. So don't worry. He knows. Hey, they should like, honestly, Melvin, they, should, they should try something new. They shouldn't hire a manager. No, let AJ just have AJ in a suite in the Dominican right. and let him manage from the, from wherever he's at. Right, he does not need to be there. There does not need oh, to be man. a babysitter. Yeah, okay. The hate is, so, the have, hate is real, man. The hate is God, real dude. this morning. Why? Because in that way, AJ can't. Well, I guess you need a fall guy. Mm. So just bring up like Ryan Flaherty or Mike Schilt, whoever or, is, a, or, or, or largest, let Mark Loretta largest, manage. Largest attendance. No, I like ever Mark. In yeah, the Padres no, I don't history. Just like him. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Most that's, sellouts that's, ever in the Padres history. Y'all reading the wrong things, man. Y'all reading the wrong things. <laughs> you know, right, I'm, reading the, I'm reading the standings. Yeah. Damn. I know. 80, Damn. 82 and 80, baby. 82 yeah, and 80. Out of the playoffs. Yeah. All right. Let me do this. Look, we're just getting rolling. Okay. Um, Padres top of mind because of the news from earlier in the day. Let me jump into a little football coming right back. All right, great friends. What's happening? This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. I want to say to everybody who's listening right now on radio, on terrestrial, traditional, real radio, in your car, driving anywhere in Southern California, we're really happy you guys are here. We wanted to get back out onto the radio, and, and we know there's still a lot of people that listen live on the radio. To everybody that's watching on YouTube, make sure you're getting involved in our YouTube chat. Jump in, get involved in the conversation, leave a comment down below, subscribe. Last year around this time, I started telling everybody I wanted to get to 7,500 subscribers on YouTube. Bro, we're there, but we need to get to 10,000. So subscribe, share, tell your friends, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, And I, I know there's a guy right now in bed at night with headphones in and listening to this show because we're putting him to sleep. My man, 
Glad you're with us. Okay. But stay with us because I want to talk some football. What? Yeah. No, it's true, man. I got a buddy of mine who was a daily, daily radio listener forever. This is before podcasts. This is before sports radio ever heard of the FM dial. This is old school. I'm talking 10, 15 years ago. And he listened to every day. He was religious. And honestly, we fell off his map. As, as a lot of, you know, things change during COVID. People stop driving the way they did. People start listening to other stuff. They, they use their phone. And he told me the other day, dude, I listen to you guys now every night on podcasts. And by the way, he was very complimentary of both of you guys. He says, Alex is the smart one. He's calm. He's not so emotional. He's rational. He knows the team back and forth. He goes, and Browner is hilarious. And he's out of his mind. And I love the guy. He's like, and I don't even know what you're doing on the show anymore. Like, they don't need you. Like, what, why do they have you? So <laughs> anyway, um, so listen, glad everybody's here. Let me, I'm going to ask you guys to start this segment. Um, we talked some Padres. We'll come back. Give me your best football story. Like what's top of mind football? Doesn't matter where it's from. What's top of mind football story for you, Grande? Like football or football related? Any football. Cause here's, here's why I got two okay. stories that I come out of this weekend with one very personal. You guys will bust my balls for it. And two, the one that everybody was watching and how it all came to an end. So I've got two like top of mind football stories. How about you? Like what's your top of mind football story? Like me personally, yeah, or you like personally. me personally, um, Caleb Williams has officially left the Minnesota Vikings peripheral because they're not anywhere near as bad as the bears and the Panthers. Like, and unfortunately, unfortunately for Bears, they'll probably get the number one pick and the number two pick because they have the Panthers pick. This is couldn't have worked out any better. They could get like they can get Caleb Williams and what's his name? Harrison Jr. from Ohio State and just rebuild. Uh, so that's personal. And then like what I think people care about here. Well, I mean, I don't know how. Brand Staley's gone away with the last two weeks, but he's gone away with the last two weeks. Like that, my, that man should be on the hottest of hot seats for the decisions that he's making. He finally decides, finally decides to implement a quarterback sneak into his system. And Once his quarterback has a broken hand. Yeah, right. Oh, really smart. Like, did you see the way he was taking these to finish that game? He had to shotgun the snap because he can't, he couldn't put his hand under the center's butt because his hand's broken. And they're like, oh, now let's run a quarterback sneak with it because he can't grip the freaking ball. It was ridiculous. That guy's that guy's a joke of a coach. By the way, too. Brandon Staley is saved not just by the other teams screwing up, but by the other teams' head coaches just being young and as inexperienced. And no, 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 no. I can't decisions. let you do that. You I can't let you do that. He not young. He not young. Uh -uh. Who that? No, 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 no. The Raiders coach. You're talking about the no, quarterback no, or the say, coach? When I, when, I, when I say young, Josh McDaniels is in his second season as the Raiders head coach. And yeah, he coached how many years? Two years, maybe in year Denver. And a half, I think. Okay, whatever it was. I'm not, you're not, Andy Reid's not on the other sideline. Can we just agree? Bill Belichick's not on the other sideline. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. I'm saying, I'm saying in the last two weeks, Kevin O'Connell and, and now Josh McDaniels, these are guys, they're not good head coaches right now either. Brandon Staley's not good. They're not good. They're a little bit worse. All right, Browner, what about you, man? What about you? So uh, give me give me your personal football story of the weekend and give me what you think everybody's talking about. Well, first, I've never been more embarrassed to brew for a football team in my entire life. <laughs> never, ever. I mean, ever. I've, I, I don't think I've ever sent a text saying that a team was so bad. And by the time I look back down in my phone to apologize about that text, you were losing. That's me. I was you texting you text clowns. 11.02 a.m. The Broncos are terrible. Lots of R. And then and then at 12.53, I replied, bro, what happened? And then you yeah. replied with the gif of a dude crying. What happened? Because I wasn't watching the game in its entirety. What the yes. hell happened? They had a 28-7 oh. lead. What happened? Mm -hmm. If you think Coach Staley is incompetent, I raise you a Matt Eberflus. Like, Justin Fields played the, the best game of his career up to this point. He'll, he'll play better games than he did yesterday. But that was the best he had ever played in a Bears uniform. And they smoked it. The Chicago Bears have never lost a lead as large as they lost Sunday. And they've been playing football for over 75 years. This guy's lost 14 straight games as a head coach. And therefore, he's lost 14 straight games as a quarterback. 
This is over. It's over. And you said Kalen Williams. Oh, they they got they gonna get one and two. They get Kalen Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. If they do that in two years, we'd be in the same place. Be well, they gotta get walking coach, out of the, There'll be people walking out of the Bear Stadium chanting for the next quarterback who's gonna be the number one pick. If I'm Caleb Williams, don't go to the Chicago Bears, bro. And I'm a Chicago Bear lifer. I'm gonna keep rooting for this team. I don't care what nobody say. But Caleb Williams, I like you. You're actually good. Don't go to Chicago, man. Don't do it. Don't Drake May, uh, Bo Nix, Shadur Sanders, say no. Say no. <laughs> say no just to say Chicago. No. Say no to just Chicago. Say no. say no. And I mean, that's just that is just a, so embarrassing. Like how the Bears it, it, could be up big. They're 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 trying to win their first game. They've got Denver on the ropes. Denver's terrible to give Denver terrible the by the come way. Back terrible. Like that, okay, it was and let just, me throw this back. Let me let me get back to this. I I, I don't mean to cut you off, but Denver's terrible. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna yeah, be really. very clear on this. Denver is terrible. The Bears are worse. Yeah, clearly, clearly. So All right. I don't want to give Denver no credit. I don't want right, to give so Denver no credit. So, so the personal is the personal is you're humiliated for being a Bears fan. What's the big story that everybody's talking about? Well, me personally, I think the big story that everybody's talking about is Zach Wilson also sucks. Because somehow this team keeps ending up on television. I know why. I know why. And if you ever want to see a team melt down, this is what a meltdown looks like. That team had Super Bowl aspirations. Now look at it. Now yeah. you're poking it with a stick yeah. going, do something. I thought yeah. that that broadcast in general was one of the most embarrassing broadcasts for a national. Oh, like man. A, a, like oh, a primetime game. Not only not only was the whole Taylor Swift thing embarrassing. Overblown. Like, for a Overblown. broadcast. Like, that well, people was are, People ridiculous. are super turned off already with this. It's like, oh, right. because it's like, okay. It's like, Enough. okay, show her in the beginning. And, right. But like the whole intro. But that's not even where I thought was embarrassing. Chris Collinsworth drooling Ooh. over any completion Zach Wilson. Like, Danny. bro, he's not Danny. a baby. He's a professional quarterback. Like, he was like, what was a number two pick, number three pick? Like, he's yeah, not a two. baby. He, I like, I, your baby's on the sideline. He's not a baby, man. Like, every throw. Oh, see, see, Aaron Rodgers. You could see the, you could see the finesse that Rodgers is showing him. Oh, look at that completion. Bro, it was a five yard dump, man. Like, yeah, like Zach Wilson made two throws. He should. He was the number two or three pick like two years ago. Like, I thought that was well. Last night was one of the most like cringy broadcasts, and I don't think I've ever said that about a broadcast ever. Yeah. Like, it was just cringe all around. I um, I I'm still I'm gonna hold on to not giving up hope on Zach Wilson yet. Um, I just Man. there's there's throws there's throws that he made last night, and there's plays that he made last night that make me think that he can eventually be a very competent starting NFL quarterback. And I just feel like um, he's gotten so beaten up. And I feel like even in losing that game last night, like the Jets could find a lot to build off of, uh, of that he, loss. He he looks like Mitch Trubisky. Um, he looks like Mitch Trubisky. To me, I watched Mitch yeah. Trubisky's entire career. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like. There'll be some games where you go, see, it's in there somewhere. Yeah. He can do it. Mm -hmm. And then the, the rest is, of it is just right. It, it's like I was thinking about. It's like it's like a golfer, a, a pro golfer. Every, all these pro golfers, they can all shoot five under par, ten under par. Right, right. But it's a question of can you do it four straight days with all the walking and all the competition and all just the all wind. the pressure and just right. just everything. Can you really do it? And the best of the best can do it over four days. The guys who can't, they just they're they're in the fifties and the one hundreds. They just never really. Mm -hmm. And Zach Wilson played a game where the Jets could have won that game until he made one critical mental slash physical error in the game where he took his eye off the ball and he didn't catch it and it turned into a fumble it's game set match it wasn't a butt fumble but it was a complete lapse of mental Brain awareness fart. yeah yeah, okay, the, so the Chiefs, the Chiefs tried to do everything they could to, let to give Zach the game away. Win that game. Everything, right? right. Everything and the crowd was going good. nuts, and you could feel the energy in the stadium. And mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, all right. So okay, so let me give you my two. You ready? Here goes my two. Um, my first one is my personal. So um, it's my son's college football team, dude. These they guys, listen, they go into this game this Saturday. They're zero and four. The team they're playing, and they got a five-hour bus ride to get there. 
the team mm. they're playing, they're 0 and 4. Two 0 and 4. Oh, like the Bears and the Broncos. Dude, two 0 and 4 football teams. True Panthers story. and the Vikings. This is oh. West Liberty oh, University cool. against Concord University. Okay. Two 0 and 4 Division II football teams, five hour bus ride for our guys to go down to their guys. So we come out and we are wide open, man. Two minute drill, um, spread offense, all the things that are putting up all these yards week after week after week because we're down 28 nothing and we got to just throw the ball all over the place. We come out on fire. I'm like, finally, coach, thank you. We take a 14 nothing lead in the game. Wow, this is amazing. 14 nothing lead. 14 0, 14 7. Um, we go for it on fourth down when we're in field goal range. We don't Ooh, get Brandon it. Staley. Yeah, we don't, we, we don't get it. We give them the ball back. Wait a second. We get the ball back with you know a couple seconds, a couple minutes to go in the first half. We drive down the field. We kick a field goal. 17-7 half. 17-7. Go into the second half now. Um, early in the second half, they score a touchdown. 17-14. It is a 17-14 game. Throughout the whole second half, about two minutes to go in the game. They rip off a long run, touchdown, 21-17 Concord. One of these two teams has to win. 21-17, now with about a minute and change to go. West Liberty, my guys, they line up. They start moving the ball down the field, move the ball down the field, right? Pick up a fourth down. Quarterbacks running with the ball. Quarterbacks making great throws. Everybody's contributing. Four seconds to go in the game. 21 17 ball on the 10 yard line quarterback takes the snap he drops back he's looking can't find anything he's moving he's rolling rolling to his left right-handed quarterback rolling to his left and throws a dart right into the end zone hits the Mm -hmm. kid in the chest kid catches the ball is immediately like jumped on and pushed out of the end zone and referees come running in touchdown walk off game winner the, the crowd goes crazy. The, the crowd of three people goes crazy, other than guys yeah. like me that were watching on our phone. Mm-hmm. These kids come running from the sideline to jump on the quarterback. Here's what I didn't know. Quarterback's father died two days earlier. Mm. Oh. Kids from L.A. Went to like L.A. Community College. He, he can't even get home. The, the, the distance, the money. I, I told my son, tell me, I'll pay for his plane ticket. You know? He can't, I, I don't really understand the, the kid can't two days earlier, dad died. Kid throws this touchdown pass for a walk-off to win the game. First win of the season. And the, and my son called me. He's like, dad, everybody's hysterical crying. Cause I guess at halftime, the quarterback was stood up and said to these guys, come on, man, we got the lead. Let's go. Let's finish this. Let's win this game. You know, gave this impassioned speech. And they all knew that his dad had died two days earlier. Is that not like, like to me, that's, that's real sports. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The stuff we're watching in the NFL yeah. and, this, and and the big time, you know, Fox noon kickoff and USC and and Colorado. I mean that that's real, dude. So that's my personal one. That's that happened mm-hmm. for me this weekend. My my one that everybody's talking about is is this. Look, um, the Chargers yesterday, good win. I grant you that good win. Raider fans took over. Obviously, nobody's surprised by that. Um, you had to find a way to gut out a victory. You found a way. Um, Justin Herbert, not exactly spectacular, statistic, uh, statistically speaking. Khalil Mack, game of his life. A lot of guys missing from uh, from the Chargers. I got it, injuries. But the Raiders have a rookie quarterback who's a mid-round pick who's making his first start. Really, you should not be giving up a, a big lead like that. In other words, the Chargers did not score in the second half. Nothing, zero goose eggs. And the Raiders had that game and had a real chance to either tie it up or maybe go for two and take the lead. And you let a rookie quarterback who's a fourth round draft choice throw the ball at the goal line rather than give it to an all pro like Josh Jacobs. It's one of the worst throws I think I've ever seen. Terrible throw, (laughs) terrible coaching decision. uh, And the Chargers lucky enough to sneak away. And now Chargers feel good about themselves. They're two and two. But the, you reality, should. but the reality is you could be 0-4 very easily. So, so look, here's what I would ask you guys. Do you think the Raiders are any good? No. No. Then I don't think the Chargers are much better, frankly. 
Yeah, uh, there's something know, not there. There's something not there with with the with the Chargers. Like I'm not seeing you know what it is. I'm not seeing a, a shine to that team. Like you for as many all pros and pro bowlers that they have on that team, it's there's something not there. You know, you listen, we all know what it is. We can all say what it is. They can't hurt us no more. It's the coach, man. It's the coach. They don't they don't play with fire like someone would if they believed in their coach. Like they're a bad like the for instance, I told y'all the Texans would beat the Steelers. You know why I knew that? Because the Texans play hard for their head coach, and they got young guys out here trying to prove something. Now, if you got a roster as good as the Chargers roster on defense, okay, and your head coach is a defensive head coach, guys going to play for you. They gonna, You're going to see that inspiration. You're going to see guys flying around. You're going to see guys making plays. You won't see these comebacks that always happen to the Chargers. You'd see them be able to snuff dudes out. They win in spite of the head coach. And I think they know that. I think they all know that. They go out there knowing, hey, man, it's up to us. This guy ain't helping us. This guy ain't helping us at all. So, therefore, what them being two and two, those players are two and two. Well, no doubt. That coach Listen, is doing four. When you think of, of Herbert, okay, and you look at his numbers yesterday, a big chunk of his passing yards came on that, uh, I think it was third and ten. Um, when he was backed up, uh, and this is like, this is the after the, the interception. Game. This is after yeah. the interception. So Asante Samuel, yarder. by the way, Asante Samuel, the guy who made the interception, bro, do you like know the situation, man? Like he makes this interception and he runs a couple of yards and then he slides down, bro. There's two plus minutes doing, to go in the game and there's a whole field in front of you. You're a, um, you're a quarterback running past some linemen, bro. What are you – keep going. And I wouldn't have even really thought too much about that, really. But I know it was like – it was brought up in the locker room after the game. And, you know, Khalil Max, like, we got to know the situation. We got to know, you know, where we are on the field. We, And I, I really hadn't thought about it because, you know, I can make an argument that, hey, it's a smart conservative play. But what it did is it put the offense back on the field with a quarterback with a busted up left finger. And back then it's third the – right, and now it's third and ten. And to Herbert's credit – he launches this 53 yard bomb game set match. If if that ball is incomplete, we might be talking about a different result, but that's Josh McDaniels is an absolutely horrendous <laughs> decision-making head coach. Ah, Last year, everybody ridiculed man. Nathaniel Hackett, dude. Man. I mean, I see what Denver is, how bad they are. I look at, at Josh McDaniels. There's a lot of bad head coaching. You talk about Matt Eber, Eberflus. We talk about Staley. Man. I'll tell you the opposite side of all that. The opposite side is what you just said, Browner, which is, will guys play for you? I will say this. Mm -hmm. um, Sean McVay, guys play for him. Guys yep. play for him. Because let me tell you, you're yep. down, you're you're up 23 nothing. That should be, a, we should be getting out of here. Let's get to the bus. And the fact that um, a rookie, another rookie quarterback, and I think Anthony Richardson is going to be a good player. Another rookie quarterback makes this monster comeback, takes the game to overtime. Credit to the Rams because they kept on playing. Even when, when Stafford was hurt, he was limping around, and they gave up this big ass lead. Guys still play for that coach. Mm -hmm. Told you, you can see the Rams. The Rams. Told moving. you the Rams are spicy. Yeah. Told you guys the Rams, the Rams are spicy. They yeah. they move with a different energy because they believe in their head coach. Mm -hmm. They believe that they're being sent out with a tactical advantage if they execute. You yeah, can, and I think the, the think Raiders also, don't feel that way. No, and I think also, but when you have a a, a Super Bowl winning veteran quarterback and you have a guy who is probably considered the best defensive player of his era, those guys uplift. You know what I'm saying? I really feel that way, that that other guys on the team want to play up to a standard. That's how Apuka Nakua, who's become like the superstar wide receiver who's a fifth-round draft choice at a BYU, that's how a guy like that goes, I I'll listen to him. The, the story is that he goes in, in the early mornings to meet with um, with Cooper Cup and, and with Stafford. Like that was like the two guys used to meet like every day. And, and Naku was like, can I come meet with you guys? So they want to play for them. I don't think Chicago wants to play for their coach. I don't think the Chargers they do. Don't. I don't think the Raiders do. They don't. Um, and they I don't, don't think the Broncos do. Oh, that's oh. getting bad, by the way. That's it's funny bad. how the NFL's got us wrapped around their finger and the NFL totally. product is pretty bad. It, they have us like around like, the board, by the like, way. Like, like, like half the teams are bad. All right, well, let's. Like, let's Patriots bad. are bad. Let, let's keep bad. it going. This segment, by the way, being brought to us by BetUS, BetUS.com, 1 800 MyBetUS. They've been in business for 30 years. So if you want to set up an account because you like to play the games, 
BetUS is the place to go. Stick around. Plenty more to get to. All right. Great friends. Hey, a little timeout, halftime here. So um, I got a message this weekend from one of our listeners who said, it sucks being old and not being able to use technology. Brother, you don't even know. I'm, I'll tell a story. I don't think Monday's the day, but I'll tell a story from this past weekend, technology wise, that just wasted hours and hours and hours of my time. Um, but here's why he had a hard time. He couldn't figure out mushroom life. I'm like, dude, what do you mean you can't figure out mushroom life? Can we just take everybody through the journey? It's not really that difficult. Either A, you go to mushroomlife.com, L Y F E, mushroomlife.com slash great friends. When you're there and you purchase and you're a first time purchaser, buyer, customer, you save 50%. It's the first time. And, um, I got to say thank you to everybody because of all the things that we do on this show, I have not really seen the instant reaction to a, a product or a brand, um, than what you guys have done right now with, uh, with mushroom life, save 50%. I was telling uh, friends this weekend about all the different products. And then I was telling them about the euphoria product. And I, Alex, I was saying how I tell everybody to microdose, take it easy, take it easy, uh -huh. take it easy. And you are like hell to the nah, no, take that whole gummy taking gummies it's for a reason well the funny part of it is is i told everybody i'm like the more i've told people to be cautious with that product the more people have bought it they're like what the hell is he talking about well, i gotta have some of that mushroom life mushroomlife.com slash great friends you'll save 50 percent on your first purchase hey this past weekend um all these football games did you read the story about how when patrick mahomes slid rather than scoring the touchdown against the Jets, it like changed everything in Vegas because people who had the Chiefs to cover nine points were about to cover the nine points. And the people who had the Jets to uh, to to cover, they were like, he's going to score, I'm going to lose. This is why betting is so complicated and it is not an easy thing to do. So um, if you'd like to try and you know take your chances here, and by the way, this is for fun, dude, not a lot of money. 1-800-MY-BET-US, 1-800-MY-BET-US. And here's why. Because even the guys who know the most information don't always win. This past weekend, I got spooked by a bunch of games and said, I'm not going to play that game. I thought I thought Pittsburgh, for sure, uh, you know, bad call. I thought Cleveland, for sure, bad call. Sometimes you got to not make that bet to win, believe it or not. But anyway, here's the point. If you're looking for where to play, BetUS. They've been in business 30 years. They've been with us two years. 1-800-MY-BETUS, um, BetUS.com to set up the account. And let's get right back to it. Hey, hey, great friends. It is Monday afternoon. This is Kaplan and crew. It's October 2nd. I got Grande and the Brown Man in the house from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. All right, look. If you're just getting with us, those of you that are listening on radio, for those of you that are on podcasts, you've been letting this thing roll. Started with some football, moved into a whole lot of Padres. Padres statement earlier today, Peter Seidler has total confidence in his leadership team. They're going to start evaluating every part of the organization. And they're going to be ready to win the World Series next year. Yay! And we jumped into football. Um, what we were personally interested in versus what we think the world is talking about. And now we come back here into segment three. And uh, fellas, I'd like to do a, a little deeper dive into the Padres and then do a little bit deeper dive into the Chargers win yesterday and the Rams win yesterday because both of those teams had big leads and both of those teams uh, let a rookie quarterback make a furious comeback and both of those teams found ways to win. So I want to get uh, into both of those stories, Padres and Rams Chargers coming right back. What does that mean? No, I had a pretzel in between the commercials. So I was cleaning my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was looking. I really was because I was talking about how bad the product is in the NFL. And I was like looking at the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. And I'm like looking. Zach Wilson, Joshua Dobbs, Mac Jones, Kenny Pickett, Baker Mayfield, Derek Carr, Dorian Thompson Gray, Justin Fields, Robinson. Russell Wilson, Dorian Thompson Robinson, uh, Justin Fields, Russell Wilson, Desmond Ritter, Aiden O'Connell. These are all quarterbacks yesterday. Right. I know. It, it, mm, when you say that, because if you said the opposite, right? If you said this, Josh Allen, amazing performance. Wow. The Bills really cooled down the Dolphins. But if you say Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, who, by the way, wasn't all that good yesterday, um, mm. Matthew Stafford. I'm just thinking about guy, guy, Dak Prescott. You know, I'm just thinking out loud of guys who like, had days. They're considered good. Kirk Cousins, Bruh. 
Dak Prescott, Matt Stafford, the rookies, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richards. Those are like good, but elite quarterback play yesterday. Josh Allen, Tua, maybe. The best quarterback didn't even win yesterday. Whatever, dude. Just just keep hyping Justin Fields. Four or maybe you were talking about Zach 300, Wilson. 400, four, 300 yards, four touchdowns. Like the best quarterback didn't even win, man. Mm, shame. It's a shame. It's a it is shame. a shame. It's a crying shame. It really it's, is. It's a damn shame what's happening in America. It is. Well, at least in Chicago in particular. Or uh, no, no, in New York. And on both sides. And both both teams. New York, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Chicago. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell is going on in Minnesota. Carolina. Atlanta. Let me ask you, me ask you a question, though. Uh, that when, I keep going. When, when the Bears were down by three mm-hmm. and the best quarterback had the ball, mm-hmm. what did he do? He threw a timing route to a guy that didn't know the play. Mm-hmm. And what happened in that play? Oh, uh, it was an interception. Okay, cool. absolutely. Just, yeah, just yeah. just checking, just checking. Yeah. yeah. Just checking. All right. Well, we'll come back to some some football stuff here in just a little bit. Um, want to get into? Want to go back to the Padres? So the Padres this I weekend. Like we don't worry about stats no more. But okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Padres 82 and 80. 82 and 80 is a stat that you seem to like, Browner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So see y'all next year. The Padres, the Padres swept the White Sox this weekend, which is what they needed to do. In three of my last eighteen, how you like them apples, boys? What was the number? Fifteen and three in the last eighteen. How y'all yeah. like them apples? Get They're some. great. It's great. It's great to win that many games. I mean, it's you can obviously go back and do do this for yourself. Go look who they beat. Just go look who they Seems, beat. Seems that they would have lost to in 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 the earlier part of the year. You're missing the point. Y'all missing the point. No, you're you, you both are missing the point. I'm okay. on point. The, what was the point. what was the biggest difference of 15 and 3? Was it the schedule? No, because they lost to the Pirates this season. They lost to the Nationals yep. this season. That's what it I'm wasn't saying. the schedule. It was the vibes. Jerix and Profar came into that clubhouse mm-hmm. and Train made the out. difference. Really? Mm-hmm. He brought well, the think, vibes. No, I think the guy who gets the credit, I think the guy who gets the credit for the Padres turnaround is Kevin Acey. I think Kevin Acey writing that article about Manny Machado, it opened the can of worms for everybody Mm -hmm. to go, oh, everybody's talking about everybody. Oh, everybody's talking behind my back. Oh, we're all doing it? Oh, yeah. We're all doing it? I thought it was just me that talked to Acey anonymously. 30 of us. 30 (laughs) of us who work here. Players, front office people, PR people. We're all talking behind your back. So you know what? We better figure out a way to close everybody out here and just be about us. And they, they had a, a great end of the season when the pressure was long off. So Alex, if you could put up the slide, wrap Which up one? 2023. Let's, oh. let's take a look at the Padres. Browner's yeah. favorite stat is at the top 82 and 80. That, that signifies success. See y'all yeah. next year. Successful season. All right, go ahead, Alex. Let's, let's take a look at these stats for everybody that's listening right now. Finished third in the national league West, 18 mm-hmm. games back from the Dodgers. Finished fifth. By the way, can I just add on to that? That the Arizona Diamondbacks finished ahead of the Padres? Like, the Padres spent $250 million on a payroll. The Arizona Diamondbacks did not. And they're going to the postseason. That's right. Uh, finished third in the national, uh, 18 games back. They finished fifth in the wild card, two games from the postseason. Uh, they finished 9-23 and 23 in one-run games. And, of course, the season ended with an extra innings win, 2-12 and 12 in extra innings. This is what, This is crazy. Plus 104 run differential. The third best in the National League. 104 more runs scored than given up. Why? Because they had the second best ERA in all of baseball. 3.73. But you see right there, batting average. 2 point or 0.244. 20th in baseball. So team batting average 244. 20th in baseball. We knew that when the season would end, the stats would say, how could this have happened? Take a look at the quote unquote big four of the Padres, Tatis, Machado, Bogarts, and Soto. All right, let's take a look at these numbers and you guys tell me good, bad, better, or worse than expected. Let's take a look. The only one that had a good year is Juan Soto. I don't really, I'll live, I'll, I'll die on that hill. You can fight me all you want about Machado, Tatis, and Bogarts. Like Soto is the only one that, that you, that he could be proud of the season he had. Everybody else, I don't care about 30 home runs from Machado or 285 batting average for Bogarts, or what mm. defense the T's played. Like, to me, 
I'll blame the left three guys for the whole season. So Soto's batting average was 275. He hit 35 home runs. He had 109 runs batted in. And, um, you know, whatever. You can look at the other stats, OPS, strikeouts to walks, et cetera. But if you put that that back up on the screen, Tatis, um, it's his first year back off the, uh, you know, monster layoff and surgeries. All the stuff. All the yeah. stuff. I, I would the say stuff. that I, I expect Tatis to be better in the Same next here. three, four, five years. Machado, but he's also, but like, let's not overlook that real quick. Why did he have such a long layoff? So don't like, yeah, he did it to himself. Yeah, this wasn't course, like yeah. a dude that had a massive like, uh, like injury, freak yeah. accident. This is a dude that crashed a motorcycle multiple times. This is a dude mm -hmm. that got caught for steroids. So everybody's mm -hmm. like, it's impressive what he did after this long layoff. He caused that layoff oh, himself. So don't no. like, I let's wouldn't not like all of a sudden, like give him all this credit. Yeah, he played a lot of games once he got back. Great. You're young. You're supposed to. So Soto, he played every game because you're young. You're both 24 years old. Like, don't – I think Tatis is getting such a hardcore pass this year. He is. He is. Like, a hardcore that, pass. That's what fans do. He yes. Came back, he came back. He electrified people in right field. He yes. made a couple of defensive plays this year that will be all-time – like, it'll be on his reel for, yes. for his entire career. And you know where people give him a pass, Alex? They go, hey, look, he learned his lesson. He was, he was humbled this year. He played right field and didn't complain about it all season long. And you know what? He hit 257 and 25 home runs. If I project the next three to four years, he's probably going to hit more like 265, 270. He's probably going to have 30 to 40 home runs. And you know what? He screwed you in two years. In other words, he screwed you last year by not being available. And this year he was okay, but he wasn't like in a groove. Like he, that That year off plus that year, year off plus two surgeries, the humbling of his ego, et cetera, et cetera. It turned out to be an okay season. Nothing special. Yeah. He is he not the face of baseball anymore? Nope, not yet. He'll be back. We'll see. He'll be back. We'll I got see. faith in him. I got faith. I in also him. agree back. with what you said too. Like I do expect them to bounce back next year and be a lot better. Yes. And so do the Padres because they gave him three hundred forty million dollars. That's not a three hundred forty million dollars season. So look, the the only that's why I judge. That's why I judge Machado. Like I don't think Machado had a good year. He had career lows almost across the board. Like 30 home runs is nice, but how many of those home runs were empty in September? Xander Bogarts oh. was like the September player of the month when the pressure was off. But these guys are getting paid $285 million by Bogarts, 300 plus a total of like $500 million from Machado. Like you got to play better than that, man. No excuses. It's it, okay. It's one or the other then. Cause now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, so tell me why you think Soto is off the hook. Why is he off the hook? Yes, he hasn't gotten paid, and he, he besides his batting average, everything else was career best. And when did but he got his numbers the same time Bogarts got his numbers? Am I wrong? No. Yes. When so he, Every, he all good, four of them, all, all four of them had a terrible August. All four of them had a terrible August when it really, really mattered. All four of them. Okay. But Soto had huge months in like July and June and and May. He also had a huge month in September. I'm not going to deny that, but. Right. Soto was good pretty much all year, except like August when they all stunk in August. I still have some concerns about his defense. I mean, honestly, he's just not some great gold glove outfielder, no matter what his like resume tells me it is. I just looking at him every day. He's okay in the outfield. Shaky. Yeah. Somebody said, Shaky. which, which article was I reading? Was it ESPN? Maybe Jeff Passan. Like the projection is that Soto will be a first baseman or DH going forward. Oh, like gosh. not not necessarily next year, but like mm -hmm. in two or three years, like this mm -hmm. dude's gonna be playing first base or DHing. I, I I this is this is what I think happened. I think these guys are slow starters, and you can people can poo poo that all poo -poo. they want. Poo poo. But Manny Machado's track record is a slow starter. We found out Xander Bogart started off great, took a big dip, came back up at the end. I wouldn't say that uh, Soto was good all year. He had down parts. His downs were down. His ups were ups. I thought Tatis was pretty much the same the entire time. Average. Thought he was average across the board. And so for me, when I look at those four dudes, I think to me, it's my opinion, me only. I think there's only one failure on there from a statistical standpoint, and that's Manny Machado. I think he's the only statistical failure on that list of those four dudes. Because again, Soto had a had a career year in home runs. He had he did what he was supposed to do. At the end of the year, 
the people who represent Xander Bogarts and why you gave him this money, they will say, statistically, look at the numbers. This is what we told you he'd give you. He gave you that when he crossed the finish line. The only person who didn't do what they traditionally do is Manny Machado. That's it. And people cannot like it or say I'm picking on him. Then I guess I am. Then I guess I am. Because if you're the man, you get the man's responsibilities. If you get the big piece of chicken, you get the big piece of responsibility. You also really? get the big blame. Is that the deal? You get like the big breast and the wing like together. You get that big. You get piece. the turkey leg. Yeah, that's a big responsibility, dude. From the well, fair, well, like you gave me that leg. Yeah. I'm the only guy yeah. with the leg. Now yeah. I got this responsibility too. If, if you get the Flintstone piece of the chicken, you get the Flintstone piece of the problems when things go wrong. Yeah. But you also get the Flintstone piece of the praise when yeah. things go right. Two and years that's what ago, last year. Two years ago, I went to Texas Thanksgiving with my my wife, and they gave me the knife to cut the turkey. That responsibility is huge. That's a big deal. And I felt that pressure. Yeah. And there I felt that pressure. You yeah. set the that, table. Why yeah. did they give the table? What, 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 yeah. Let me ask you a question. Hold on. Yeah. Were, were there no other men? I, I'm thinking this is like a traditional Mexican. Yeah, no, no. Hold on. Know, hold on. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Let me, I'm not going to let you insult my dog like that. What you mean with the other men around? Don't man, don't matter who else is around. No, he I'm was in to, there. Yeah, but I'm trying to understand the dynamics here. You see, I've nah, got questions. Listen. I mean, I want to know, are there yeah. other men or why did yeah. they give it to you? Did they say, hey, because Alex is very experienced at this? Or never carved say, the turkey. I've never been given that power. I'm the patriarch of that family. It's a, it's okay. a family full of uh, women. Okay. Over there, See, I you know? need to understand. So there's no so other the, there was the, at the, Two years ago, the boyfriends, that, the boyfriends that were there did not have the seniority that I did. They got no status. I'm trying to understand. And the brother... The brother, I'm older than the brother okay. by like see? five or six, six, yeah. six years. Okay. So, so you see, yeah. brother, don't get so offended for your dog. No, dog? listen, now nah, it don't matter who was in that room. That dog cut that turkey because you know they felt the real alpha up in there. They gave the okay. alpha, but, they gave the alpha unlike, the blade. Unlike unlike Machado, after getting the knife, I carved the hell out of that turkey. There was you no bone, me? there was no meat left on that bone. He was last sliced Machado. that breast exactly where it was supposed to go. The mom mm-hmm. got whatever. The mom got the first piece too. What do you want? Mm. She got had it organized. She got, some, she got a little dark meat too. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I, take, so I, I like that. I like the dark organized. meat too. Yeah, no, yeah, I like yeah. the dark yeah. meat too. You hear that, Browner? Dark meat That's is what I want. I've had white meat my whole life, man. The other day I was in the grocery store. I was oh trying to buy God. some chicken. It was like all white meat chicken. I'm like, I don't want all white meat. I want some dark and I want some white. Sometimes I like white. A lot of times I might like dark. Controversial take. I at Thanksgiving I only do white meat. Oh really? Only. Interesting. But I drenched that thing in gravy. Yeah, because it's a little dry. It's, sometimes it's a little dry. Yeah. Sometimes All, right. Little dry. All right, let me do this. Hold on real quick. Browner, you're so hyped on, on the Padres 82 and 80, and the only guy that didn't succeed Coo-coo! this year we'll was see y'all next year. <laughs> Maybe what you should do is this. I'm just throwing out an idea. Mel- Melvin, too. Oh, yeah, Melvin's gone. Browner, I hope what? not. I hope not. If I got stuck with AJ, you better be stuck with Melvin too. All right. Well, Come well on down, Gabe Kaplan. <laughs> well, you know, um, I would be curious if we went to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, and we looked at the poll that we put up last week. I wonder where we are in the results, what people want the Padres to do. Uh, hold on. We'll have the poll for you in one second. Before we do, uh, Browner, it is uh, it's about that time, I do believe. Oh, yes, yeah. We, uh, we're getting light, man. We're getting light. Where my dog at? Where uh, my dog Brett's at? Brett's coming on the show tomorrow. Brett's going to be on the uncensored portion of tomorrow's podcast. Brett better pop the trunk. Oh, he's got, he actually was dropping off two double X t-shirts for you. Uh, oh, man, team. listen, I'll need a double X bottle. Brett, I love you, brother. I don't need no t-shirts. I need pills. I need, I need gel capsules and I need tinctures, brother. I thank you. I hung the shirt up. What do you, I need, uh, this, I need this bottle filled. What Mushroom Life product are you taking right now? Tell me what tincture you're taking. This right here, Sustained Energy. Just I stay live the whole time we're doing the show. You feel me? Yep, I Two do. drops well, this. When you buy your box, you're going to get some literature from Mushroom Life. Mushroom Life has launched a revolutionary line of functional and euphoric mushroom products utilizing the planet's most powerful medicinal mushrooms. This unique and appealing line, highly effective, efficient, and a convenient solution to nurture mm-hmm. the body and elevate the mind. We call it Mushrooms for Life. Look, if you take medications for sleep, for focus, um, for anxiety, for your football energy, team sucks. You know, hey, listen, you take medications for these things, you might want to try a plant-based medication, Mushroom Life. They're based in Carlsbad. I've seen how they operate, how they how how they make the gummies, how they package them, how they ship them. People ask me, like, is it legal? I'm like, yeah, it's like plant-based medicines. Mushroom Life, L-Y-F-E, mushroomlife.com slash great friends. You save 50% when you make your first purchase. Now that bag in the middle, the uh, Euphoria product, I, get my hands this, on that. I was telling the story this weekend that um, we we 
you micro dosed, right? But these young ladies who were we with, I say young ladies are all moms. They all took way too much. And the next day they were down and out. It took like 15 hours. And so the more I've kind of tried to scare you off of the Euphoria product, the more you guys came to, seem to keep buying it. Mostly because I keep telling you, just take a little bit, just a little bit. And Alex, on the other hand, he's like the, the other devil on the other shoulder. Take it all. Yeah, who cares? Just doing a controlled environment. Don't get behind the wheel of a car. Right. Be at home. But responsibly be at home. No, if you're at home, do what you got to do, baby. Yeah. Do it at home and, and do it early in the day. That's all I'm saying. I almost do made it. it I, I'm not going to say any details, but much, I ran into Browner on Saturday. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, no, on Sex I, Drop Saturday? <laughs> you ran into Browner on Sex Drop Saturday? I have no details whatsoever, <laughs> but in my head. Why you always got to bring this up? Just in my head. No, man. You have to I bring was this like, up. I was like, ah, oh, Sex Drop Saturday. Okay. Yeah, that's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. Browner, how was it? What you mean, how was it? Did you did you take part in Sex Drops Saturday with the Mushroom Life Sex Drops? Was it Saturday? It was. Did I have the drops? I don't know. I'm asking. How would I Yeah, know? yeah. What you mean? <laughs> what you mean? Yeah, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Oh. Mm hmm. Hey, listen. Sex Drop Saturday is going to be happening until that bottle is empty. Okay. What was that, Alex? End of story. What was that move? End of the story, man. That's all. Listen, well, Brown can say nothing. whatever he wants. I ain't saying say nothing. nothing. All right. That's all right. it. That's it. All right. You say 50% when you go to Mushroom Life, L-Y-F-E, mushroomlife.com slash great friends. And thank you to everybody who has already decided they wanted to try these products. And we get to see every day how we're doing. You guys are buying the hell out of them. So thank you. All right. Let, so last now. thing here. Before we go, like I said, I wanted to go more into the Chargers and Rams on the other side. Last thing. As far as the Padres, we went through all the numbers. You know, um, what the season turned out like how the big four performed or didn't perform. It's just last thing. Earlier today, they they make this statement. You know, and the statement pretty much says, I think most people would read it this way, the, the statement pretty much says, we're not doing anything. We're keeping A.J. Preller. We're keeping his whole staff. We're even keeping Bob Melvin because he's got another no. year on his contract. I mean, that's how I read mm, it. Not me. Okay, tell me, read the statement and tell me how you're you Our current it. leadership team has my full support. Mm. Mm -hmm. Leadership team. Okay. And I've asked them to perform a thorough assessment of our organization. I consider Bob part of the organization, not the leadership team. Beginning today, we'll make the changes necessary, <coughs> Bob, to play championship caliber baseball for our extraordinary fans. In oh, so you say that your read is they're scapegoating Melvin. They're going to fire Melvin. They're going to fire numerous coaches mm -hmm. and promote from within. I think they have Mike Schilt here, who was a successful manager with the Cardinals. I think that there's been reports that Flaherty, the hitting offensive coordinator, whatever the hell he's called, I think that he's he's kind of on Mel on Preller's side here. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if one of those two is the manager next year. I'd oh, be shocked right. if Bob Melvin was the manager next year. Oh, Bob Melvin's not going to be the manager because he, with one year left on his deal, they either fire him so that they can scapegoat him, so that they can use no, him to as I a think, sacrifice for the fan base, or he quits. I no, I think that they negotiate with the Giants the way the A's let him because that way they get off the hook of four million dollars. If the Giants can take him away, if mm -hmm. you give grant him the access to go talk to the Giants and then you grant him the right to leave the way the A's did, you're off the hook for four million. Yeah. If you're the Giants, you, you could sell this to your fan base like this. A, he did a great job with the A's, and most of us know who he is from, from his days with the A's. Two, we've seen what happened when the Padres have let us have what their manager, and we saw what happened with Bruce Bochy. So, and he worked with Farhan Zaidi in Oakland, I believe, oh, for like three years. Easy sell. Easy sell. Yeah. All right, stick around. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. I'm going back to Rams, Chargers, and a deeper dive next. Uh... What's up? The recording's not ending. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> you guys can leave. I'll, I'll figure it out. Oh, it's funny. It says, are you sure you want to leave the studio? Because the, the clock hasn't stopped. Hey, great friends. What's going on? Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. 7milecasino.com, like I always like to do, man. I want to thank all the radio listeners out there. If you're listening on 1090, anywhere in Southern California, so glad you guys are with us today. If you are watching on YouTube, I encourage you to get into the YouTube chat. Make sure you're a subscriber. You can click the share button and put this out on social media. That's awesome. To all of our audio podcast listeners, you're doing this on your own time. If you want to communicate with us, hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, uh, freaking LinkedIn, TikTok, Cited, you name it. 
we're around and we're easy to reach. And uh, to everybody who's watching on TV on Cox throughout Southern California, glad you guys are here. As a matter of fact, Alex, I think um, we start getting back onto Cox in our regularly scheduled time, right? I think we're on seven yeah. o'clock every day. Yeah. Seven o'clock now. So if you are a San Diego, uh, you have Cox or Spectrum. Actually, if you're in San Diego, Orange County, LA or Santa Barbara, you can catch up to the show. We're on channel four in uh, San Diego and Santa Barbara. And we're on channel 118 in Orange County and in LA Cox and Spectrum uh, subscribers. So, all right, listen, let's keep going. So I'll start with the chargers. I, I mean, it is amazing to me that in two weeks in a row, you could win games in this kind of way. Uh, here's what I mean. You go back to the Minnesota game a week ago, the chargers, throw a ball that hits off of a Minnesota defensive back's hands, hits his helmet, and then bounces into the receiver's hands for a touchdown. Then the Chargers go for it on fourth and one from their own 24-yard line, don't get it, and the Vikings take over, and it looks like the Vikings are going to go score the game-winning touchdown, and then Kirk Cousins and uh, you know Kevin O'Connell, these two guys can't communicate, and rather than Cousins spiking the ball and resetting, he throws a ball, gets popped up in the air, interception, Chargers win. Very, very lucky win. But a whim. Mm -hmm. This past weekend, you're playing the Raiders. There's no Jimmy Garoppolo. The Raiders. I'm not saying Jimmy Garoppolo is any good. I'm just saying that he's a veteran quarterback who knows the system of the head coach. That's all I'm saying. He's, he's better than whatever that Derek Carr lookalike was yesterday. Aiden O'Connell. Oh. Dude, num number four jersey, mm -hmm. mustache, looked just mm -hmm. like Derek Carr. In, a in helmet? Form. Right. I did like a double, triple take. Same. In same. the helmet. I was like. Who's right, that? right. He yeah. looked just like Derek Carr, but just to like to him. have the kind of lead that the Chargers had, and then not score a point in the second half, to have a, a a linebacker that's got six sacks in the game and a quarterback. This is the Raiders who who's turning the ball over, who's getting hit all over the place. It's his first start. He's four games into his career. He's a mid round draft choice. I, I'm not saying he couldn't be Brock Purdy, but not with this team, not with this coach. So. You're not playing against Patrick Mahomes. You're not playing against Russell Wilson, for that matter. You're playing against Aiden O'Connell, the rookie, fourth-round pick from Purdue. And in the second half, the Raiders come storming back. Defensively, they're putting all kinds of hits on Justin Herbert. And the, the, the Raiders are now climbing back into this game, climbing back in. And O'Connell's picking up steam. And then you get down to where... You are the Raiders and you have a chance to win because the Chargers yet again on a fourth and one from their 36 yard line. Now they decide to run this quarterback sneak and everybody knows it's coming. And somehow the Raiders held up with a goal line caliber stand. It's 24 17. There's 330 to go in the game. And then Aiden O'Connell throws a ball down at the goal line with like two minutes and change to go. By the way, I, I got to back up because I think the play before was fourth and 10, right? And so O'Connell throws this ball to Devontae Adams because at that point he was only throwing the ball to Devontae Adams. Smart, smart yeah, kid. Damn right. It was fourth and 10. He threw a perfect pass to him. And they picked up a fourth and 10. The Chargers defense gave up a fourth and 10 to the Raiders rookie quarterback. And then on the next play, this kid throws a dart, but it went to Asante Samuel from the Chargers. Why Josh McDaniels would have a rookie quarterback down by seven with two and change to play along the goal line, why would you have him throw the ball as opposed to giving it to Josh Jacobs? Did you not learn from Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson in the Super Bowl a few years ago? It was the dumbest coaching move like that I've seen in the last two weeks between, mm. between McDaniels and Staley. Well, Staley. Did mm. a dumb coaching move right before that too. I, I right honestly, before dude, it. Tell honestly, me, re remind me, uh, refresh my memory. The fourth and one with a okay, quarterback so has one, yeah. or a broken yeah. hand. Yep. Peak at your own twenty. What was the thirty-four yard line? Yeah, I yeah. mentioned that, of course. Yeah. No, I know, but I just think that was dumber. I, I, I listen. I'm not gonna not blame Josh McDaniels because I, I'm not gonna defend him. But as a quarterback, if you made it to the NFL. If you made it to the NFL, you have to be smarter than that throw. You're at the three-yard line. Throw it in the back of the end zone. Throw it as high as you can into the bleachers at SoFi Stadium. Like, it's first and goal at the three. Why are you even throwing? Well, 
And also, is Josh Patel the offensive coordinator? Because I will blame him for this. Why are there routes being run where you're not even in the end zone? You're on the three-yard line. That ball wasn't even going to be a touchdown anyways. Whoever he was throwing to, I think Jacoby Myers, he wasn't even in the end zone. He yeah. was like in the one. Mm-hmm. So it was just so stupid. It, like That's just my like, larger point, and then I'll come back to it. This is terrible football all across on Sunday. Everywhere. Bad football. That was such a stupid, I, stupid throw by Aiden O'Connell. Because Jacoby Myers quit. First of all, he quit on the route. And then mm-hmm. once it did get intercepted, instead of like trying to get you know Samuel because there's a ton of time left, mm-hmm. he goes like, oh, come on. He throws his hands up and he quits right there. Just terrible all around, dude. I, terrible. I blame the coach in that instance because of all the things you just said. All the things you just said is why I blame the coach. Turn around and hand that thing off, man. You got a beast back there. Turn around and hand that thing off. You this close, he's your he's your second best offensive weapon. The first one is Adams, obviously. He's your second best offensive weapon, and you all you need your offensive line to do is push forward. To me, if you don't, if you put young quarterbacks in bad positions. Bad things will happen. That's what you saw. You put a young quarterback in a bad situation, and you got a bad result. So it's, it's on the coach. It's on yeah, the coach. But I, I would say this, that as much as we will blame the loss for the Raiders on the um, on the coach, we're not likely going to give much credit to the Chargers coach wow. because that was brutal. And you know what happened? Your point about – um the fourth and one play on the 36 yard line. Not only is it another week of making a a bad decision and not only is it another week of not picking up the fourth down, but um, when the quarterback is hurt the way he is and he's in, we're watching the video right now, his left hand, his middle finger has a splint on it (laughs) and his entire left hand is taped like as if it's broken. You know, 10 minutes broken. left, by the way. <laughs> At that point, it's 10 minutes left in the game. Yeah. And he's got a makeshift cast on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, by the time football. he got the fourth and one, it was full like glove, full tape. <laughs> yeah. Everything. It looked like right. a club almost. And it was um, and, and is it officially is it that what the diagnosis is now? It's a broken left he, finger. Yeah, fractured finger. Yeah. And so the play on which he um, he gets hurt. He threw an interception. This was uh, earlier in the fourth quarter. And he's trying to make a, a stop on the interception, Justin Herbert. And the Raiders' defensive linemen are just throwing him around. You know, two of them are just throwing him around. He gets his hand, I guess, caught in somebody, I guess, Max Crosby's, Crosby's face, face mask. mask. Yeah. You know, and then he's hurt. And I'm just telling you, Brandon Staley, very lucky to be two and two. I'm sure everybody's bouncing around the Charger facility today like, hey, you know what? We're we're two and two after four games. That's not so terrible. Put it this way. The Rams two and two is a lot more impressive to me than the Chargers two and two because the Chargers, they would argue, could be four and oh. I could argue they could be 0 and four. What did Staley say after the game? Also, like real quick. uh, Yeah. Like before we get to that, Staley will also say we got two defensive stops to end the game. He will. That's true. That's what he He said. That's what he said. Mm-hmm. See, I didn't then, even know. Let, I me, didn't... let me play Staley because he—you could tell. I know bad He's, coach. Maybe. He knows. He knows the question's coming. Mm-hmm. He's already annoyed. Mm-hmm. So just look at the way he answers. Yeah, I mean, every 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 decision has a life of its own, Jeff. And I've said it for three years now. So we're going to do what we feel like gives us the best chance to win. Um, the storyline is the way our defense played, um, the way we played in the first half offensively, but our defense carried us today. It was a really really tough performance with a bunch of guys out. We had a lot of premium players out in the game, and the storyline was the toughness of our team and the way it played um, in a tough game against a division opponent, and um, our guys had their best at the end. Premium I, players. I love – well, the, the, if you look at who was inactive yesterday, they did have – like Joey Bosa didn't play as an example, and there's others. Well, well, why would he refer to them as premium players? Well, because that's they're the top the guy level. backing him up. That's the – paid. Dude, that's the top level paid guys. I mean, it was an offensive lineman. I don't remember what his name is. Uh, Bosa, and I think there were maybe two. Other, well, Mike Williams was gone, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. There were a couple other guys. I think it, I feel like there was a DB that was out. But anyway, um, I love how Brandon Staley tries to dictate the storyline. Hey, I'm the coach. You're the writers and you're the media. Here's what the storyline is, just so you know. It's the defense carried us in the second half and the offense played really great in the first half. Go write that. Ready, break. Um, 
the offense in the first half scored 24 points and they scored zero in the second half. And the defense, which, you know, you want to say it bent, um, go look at the stats. I think the Chargers are 31st in the NFL in points allowed. You'll have to double check me and triple check me, but I'm almost sure. They're like 31st in the NFL in points allowed. Maybe some premium players were out, but hold on. Check me on this. Wasn't that a rookie quarterback making his first start? Was he a premium player? Because he wasn't the first overall pick. He wasn't the second. He wasn't a first rounder. He wasn't a second round. He's a fourth round kid who was drafted to be developed as a backup quarterback. That's what fourth round kids are. That's what Brock Purdy was drafted for. It turns out career changed. But come on, man. Most points allowed out of 32. 28th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, yeah, like the, the Chargers defense, even with Joey Bosa, they're not good. The Chargers defense with Derwin James, still not good. So just not good. I think all around. And then yesterday, like Justin Herbert was bad. Justin Herbert was bad yesterday. I, I we, we haven't against the Raiders defense that has given up the 26th most points in the NFL. Look at his like, numbers it, yesterday. I mean, for a bad. guy who every week puts up these big numbers, I mean, he you did actually not... blew my mind. I had yeah. no idea that they were shut out in the second half. Yeah. They were shut out in the second half by the Raiders. Right. Right. There's something funky, dude. And I uh, listen, I, I I don't know if it's the easy answer or if it's the most obvious answer that it feels like it's the easiest answer that Brandon mm-hmm. Staley is the problem. Like, is yes. it that obvious? Because yes. this team has played the Dolphins, who have a terrible defense, the Vikings, mm-hmm. who have a terrible defense, and the Raiders, mm-hmm. who have a terrible defense. And they lost to the Titans, who, like, a week ago, they looked awful. They looked terrible, and then they beat the Bengals. Like, I don't know. They haven't played hey, let me a, ask you like question. A, a crazy hard schedule, and they haven't been me convincing me at all. Save time for the Rams. Go ahead. Just for the sake of conversation, mm-hmm. take him off the table. What else do you think it could be? Just, okay, just good just, question. Just for the, just for the giggles, mm-hmm. what else could it be if it's not him? I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a good know. question. So it really I mean, is a question. because like they, everybody, everybody in the national media and the local media wanted to crown the hiring of Kellen Moore as like this, this, this revolution that's going to change Justin Herbert. Dude, Justin Herbert was thrown for five thousand yards with Before the last Kellen guy. Got out of bed. Like, yeah. what do you want him to do? You know, what do you want him to do? Like, yeah. I, I just don't, I, I don't, yeah, it's, and it is so much like the Padres there. It's, 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 it's eerie what the Chargers are, what the Padres are. It is so eerie. Like, they never left. Like, yeah, they left the city, but they're still mm-hmm. the same as they were when right. they were here. And by the way, that's bad ownership. I mean, that's, it's the same problem. Oh, now, yeah, 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 yeah. now, now yeah, go to bad. the other, go to the other side, you know, go to the earlier games yesterday. This is, um, I, I wanted to jump into the Chargers, but I want to come into the Rams for a quick second here. So the Rams, to me, um, they're already overachieving, in my opinion. You know, like to me, the Rams have a Super Bowl winning coach, a Super Bowl winning quarterback, and a guy who's a generational player on defense. And that's what the Rams have. And I feel like um, when you're a superstar quarterback, because I watch Philip Rivers do this a lot. When you're a superstar quarterback, a lot of times you can take players that are no-name wide receivers, work with them, cultivate a relationship, a trust, put them in the right position, and guys can be successful even when they're not huge stars. Um, And great quarterbacks can make players, in my opinion. Puka Nakua, I'm not trying to take anything away from this young man at all. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Amazing, amazing what he has accomplished in these first four games. But the best part of what Puka Nakua did, in my opinion, is that this guy, I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, all these targets, all these receptions, but the difference is no touchdowns. And yesterday, not only did he score his first NFL touchdown, but it was the walk-off touchdown, which was really cool. I mean, and what a move he makes when he catches the ball and right there in between the two DBs. I mean, just an incredible play. Um, I, I got to say, I have a much better appreciation for Stafford after a game like yesterday. thought he was great, and I thought he showed a lot of heart. Look at this kid, Puka Nikul. Go Take us through the stats here, Alex. Look at that. Uh, nine yesterday. catches, 163 yards, his first career touchdown yesterday on the season. 39 catches, 501 yards, uh, which 39 catches is the most by an NFL rookie in the first four games in the history of the NFL. But, but again, here's the only thing I'll say. 
it's a good win for the Rams, but they were up 23 nothing, And they allowed a rookie quarterback who was coming out of missing a game because he had a concussion. They allowed a rookie quarterback to make a furious comeback and tie the game and have to go to overtime. They also so, got shut out in the second half, if I'm not mistaken, because it was well, 23 nothing. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say I think Jason Rich no, scored three. Had, they scored three. He had to get going. I think because he had missed last week. I think Anthony, I'm sorry. He had to get going. And once he got going and offense got going, I could they kind of got their wind underneath him and they were able to put some points on the board. But I, I know, can't but don't, like it, but don't you find it interesting that it's it's a rookie quarterback again? No. You know, no. I mean, to me, I, when you're playing against a, a rookie quarterback, I think there was a stat that no rookie quarterback had ever won a game against an Aaron Donald defense. So mm. all I'll know is this. I can't let yeah. you take that away from Puka. Stafford got That's hurt. It. So that I think that to me was the more thing. Like Stafford legit got hurt. He is because he's so old. His hip is like now anytime he gets tackled, he was limping around because he has yeah. a busted hip. So I think that yeah. changed the whole dynamic of the game because he was limping around everywhere. He was just limping. For Puka to have got his first touchdown in a situation where he ran it in the end zone, mm -hmm. the thing that he was criticized the most for so far without being able to do, and he's doing everything Cooper Cup does in his fifth year, he doing it in his fourth game. That ain't Matthew Stafford. That ain't, that's the system, baby. That's the system cooking. That is the system alive and well right there. You get the ball Matthew to the Stafford. guy in the middle of the field to make a play. Boom. Matthew Stafford made Calvin Johnson a first ballot Hall of Famer. Matthew Stafford and quarterbacks. Ask Garrett Wilson if a quarterback makes a difference. A quarterback makes a difference. No, hold on. Time out. Time Come on. Out. I'm, not, I'm not saying what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what are you doing? What are you doing? I never you're said gonna, that. You're going to you're, you're insult. He's going to take it as an insult that, that Calvin Johnson, who was an amazing talent, but if he doesn't have a good quarterback to get him the ball, he's not going to have the numbers. You're not going to give Stafford so, any credit. So, Randy Moss was what? With Dante Culpepper was what after Randy Moss? Not much. Yeah, I mean, what did he right. do in Miami? Right, mm -hmm. right. So it's equal. It's equal. but Matthew Stafford has come, did it in two different systems, two different teams, two different cities. I'm saying like you're just trying to diminish what Stafford is to this to the system. Well, Stafford is also, part of the I system. Never once, he's also I never trying. To, he's trying to put it in Matt our Stafford. face. What he's trying to do is put it in our face. No, that Puka Nakua, a rookie, has taken yeah. the role of Cooper Cup. Thank you. And that, and yes. that therefore, Thank he's you. right that Cooper Cup right. was never really that good. It was always the system. Yeah. That's what he's putting. No, in. but I'm like trying to. Matt I, Stafford. I, Man, you, I'm you trying to Matt Stafford in there. I got to beef with Matt Stafford. No, I'm put. I'm telling you that Stafford is part of the system. Look at last year. How did John Wolford do? Where was Puka? Where was Cooper? Where was Puka? He was there. Where was Puka? At BYU. There you go. That's where that's the problem. If Puka mm -hmm. would have been up in there, we would have had the same numbers. You know what's amazing? Puka. You know what's amazing about this Puka thing is that, is that people he's got such a great name that you can just be a one name guy, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh I, this guy, man, what a what a sensational start to a career. I really the Rams I really, are gonna uh, be unstoppable next week when Cooper Cup comes back. Oh yeah. They're just gonna have Listen. two guys get 150 yards every game. Cooper Best Cup needs to go to the league. Robert Woods position, okay? Because he needs to go to Robert Woods position. Puka stay Eagles, where he at. The Eagles give up the most fantasy points to every wide receiver. It sounds crazy, but they really do. They give up a ton of points to wide receivers, and that's who the Rams play next in L.A. Cooper Cup's coming back. Puka Nakua, Kyron Williams. The Rams are spicy. What is the uh, – Spicy. What, is, what time is that game on Sunday next week between the Rams One and the Eagles? One o'clock. Oh, wow. See, that's one of those games where I um, I wish I was coming Probably. back into town. I'm, I'm going to see my daughter at Boise State. It's like dad's weekend. God, I would love to go to that Eagles-Rams game. The the uh, Eagles might break Matthew Stafford. Their maybe. Their defensive still, line is their, their defensive yeah. line. Oh, my I mean, God. Maybe, especially oh the way God. Matthew Stafford but, is already like broken, right? But, Take him down once. Yeah, they'll put pressure. But Sam Howell yesterday showed, just make accurate throws and you'll score points against them. Yeah. They don't have it, like a unstoppable defense. Like name a linebacker on the Eagles. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. couldn't. Do I'm it. telling you, like their defensive front is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But Amazing. if you can get past that with quick passes in the system, Cooper Cup five yards, Puka Nakua ten yards. Watch. Watch. Hey, um, real quick, let's uh, just before we hit this this last break, and we'll we'll get back into some Padre stuff. Give me the recap on how we did last week in our picks because my picks are just awful. God, I'm a terrible picker. This is why I stayed yeah. away from betting uh, this week. Uh, you went one and two. You 
You got the yep. Chargers. You missed on the Colts, and you missed on the Browns, but you didn't know Tor- Dorian was going to play. You're six and six on the season. I went two and one, eight and four. Browner did two and one. He's now four and eight. All right. Yeah, All right, we go. getting there's there. Our, there's our season totals. All right, to everybody who's listening on radio, stick around. We're going to get restarted, and we'll jump into some Padre stuff. Everybody who's with us on podcast, we're going to go get uncensored. So come jump in with us. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew.